So, hello guys, here from ECN TV. Today I got uh, Semler, the big famous caster. It's an honor for me to meet you. Thank you very much for the interview. Ah, thanks for having me, man. Serious. So nice. Um, so, let's talk about the ESL Pro League. Uh, what is your opinion about the ESL Pro League? What is the biggest surprise for you in this season? Virtus Pro coming in last, pretty much, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a pretty big surprise. I don't think any of us expected to see such a horrible result from such a prestigious team. But um, unfortunately, VPF, you know, it goes over such a long period of time. But to be for the league, right, the duration of the league, but for them to be so consistently poor throughout that dura that that couple months is is shocking. So it, it, that's why I think you know the team has been taking a lot of fire recently. There's been a lot of criticism thrown their way that perhaps they're in a slump. Maybe they need a roster change. Something needs to happen because they'll play these online games and they just get destroyed. It's not even close. Sometimes it's just like they just get rolled over. Yeah. And so you start wondering what the hell is going on. Yeah. Uh, that's probably one of the bigger shocks for me this tournament so far. The fact that Navi also you know didn't qualify, failed to perform. Uh, it might, might be another one, you know, the fact that they aren't in the top four of this tournament is, is I think, would be a shock. So, yeah, a couple of things like that. I mean, it's, so far, though, it's been a pretty steady tournament. I guess another big shock is just NIP. Where did this NIP come from? Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. you know, they're playing in the semifinals versus Luminosity, and mm -hmm. you're just like, what is this? Going to map three? What? Yeah. So, it's the return of NIP. It's, a, it's like this hero story yeah. of, you know, hard work pays off in the end, you know. You just, you just stay at it, you stick to it. And eventually, you'll actually manage to do something, right? Yeah. And they've, they've managed to come out of the gutter and actually start taking teams that are the best in the world to three maps. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, you talked about Vitus Pro. Um, they played catastrophic in the season, yeah. but offline, it's working. Music. Or it's like it's working well enough yeah. so that they're not just getting you know demolished offline. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's not enough. Like, I need to start seeing them get into like the top of the brackets again, mm -hmm. and I need to start seeing them actually challenge teams for the title. Um, and I'm not quite sure what the solution is for them. And that's, I mean, I've spoken with some of the players, and it always seems to go round about where we're like, okay, well, what about this? And then it's like, ah, oh, but we've tried that, or we, you know, we did it this way, blah blah. blah. And it's always a discussion, right? On mm -hmm. like, okay, well, what what needs to be tweaked? To, to get players, you know, hitting that peak performance again, right? Because we saw Snacks in a slump, and then Snacks yep. was back, but then, you know, that wasn't enough. Yep. And so what is enough? You know, what, what do you need, really, mm. to get a team to actually perform now? The, a team like VP, who are unique as well, because they're the only team to have been together that long, that roster, yep. to have stayed together that long. Uh, they've, they've played every major with this roster, which is insane, right? Yep. So it's been a long time that they've been together. So it's only normal that now... There are questions, you know, is it time for a roster change? Is it time to actually try and revamp the project and do it a different way? Uh, because if they can't seem to find a way to make it work, you know, what, what's really left to them, right? What, what, what else do you do? That's how usually teams do. They change rosters. They, the roster lasts six months to nine months, and then, okay, we replace two players, and we just try and reinvent ourselves. Mm -hmm. VP are unique in the sense that they've just stayed at the same five forever. Yeah. So... <laughs> Well, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit out in the woods right now as to like what to expect from them. Okay. Um, so, Astralis get kicked out of the group stage. The bad karma, or how you want to call it, is back. Uh, do you think they win in the future a tournament? <laughs> yeah. They're perfectly capable of winning a tournament. What happened is a fluke, I think, because it's, perf it's perfectly fine to go out of the tournament mm -hmm. versus Luminosity, right? I mean, you're talking about a top two team in yep. the world in a best of three. You fought well in that best mm -hmm. of three. So there's no shame there, right, going out to Luminosity. It's, it's this fluke loss versus Optic mm -hmm. on Inferno where Optic were able to control the map. They never let um, Astralis get a, a firm economy on the CT side. Mm -hmm. And they just, they, Optic really just, Optic played better. Yep. It's as simple as that. And, it's, and you cannot have that kind of mistake happen when you are supposed to be a top four to six team. Mm -hmm. You do not lose against a, fifth, like, what, top 20 team or something. Like, like Optic, I mean, what have Optic done? Nothing. Yeah. You're Astralis. And I think that's what, what gets into their heads. They, they, they clearly start to play not to lose, basically. Instead of playing to win, they start, they start playing not to lose. And so when they get behind in a match, this is something that Astralis are constantly dealing with. It's like, okay, so you see that they take less peaks, they take less fights, they try and force things left, they try and play safe. And unfortunately, that's not going to work. That's not going to win you tournaments because sometimes you, actually, you, know, you may be behind or you may be ahead, but you still have to play your game. You have to focus and just do what you would have done no matter the no matter the situation. You may be, you know, it might be match point for the others. 
you sometimes you just have to peek mid. Sometimes you have to go for the aggressive yeah. pick and take control of the situation, right? Sitting around the corner and just waiting, that's not going to cut it most of the time because then for these teams, you give them that kind of space and they'll roll over you. So it's it's this it's still very much like a strategy to figure out how to get over this mental block that they have, I think, that, mm -hmm. that constantly forces them to fall back into a defensive like a defensive stance whenever things get rough. And you know, teams that win tournaments don't have that. Yep. Teams that win tournaments, what do they do? They have fallen and he goes and hunts people down. Yep. <laughs> he gets into this mindset of I am going to make this frag happen one way or another. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's forty seconds left in the round and maybe I should back off and play safe from the A site. No, I'm gonna take the fight in restroom yep. at mid on overpass, take that pick, and then I'll fall back because I did what I set out to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's that kind of mindset that wins you tournaments. It's not like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go and play safe from the site, right? Because we don't want to give them any kind of edge, right? No, you have to dictate what happens in the game. And so Astralis, they still have to figure out how to actually get them themselves into that mindset, I think. Okay, um, now um, very interesting questions for the German community is, um, Nico and Mousebot. So right. a lot of people in the community say, oh, Nico, he is Nico Sports and he plays everything alone and he clutch every round, mm -hmm. the whole team is doing nothing. What is your opinion? You think it's not fair for the other players? Nico is like ridiculously good, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's, there's a, a, been a lot of talk these days about whether he's the best player in the world now. Yep. Because he is unreal. Now, whether he is, you know, I think he, it is justified a bit of the attention that he gets, right? Because he is able to clutch, he is able to entry, he is able to, you know, just basically fill any role on the team pretty much. Mm -hmm. And he's calling on top, right? But there, there's where things get a little muddled, right? A little difficult to read because he is calling. And so that does mean that he has a certain influence, like Happy who did back in the day with LDLC and Envy. You know, he has a bit of an influence over what his team is doing around him. And so he'll be able to, you know, set it up maybe a little bit around him and get the job done that way. I mean, there, there is no real, like, you cannot say that he has the best players built around him. Unfortunately, I feel like sometimes that actually works against them, where Nico tries to force it too hard because maybe he doesn't have as much faith in his teammates to get the job done on their own. But then in the past, they've shown that they aren't exactly reliable. They aren't exactly capable at all times. You'll have Spitty, Dennis, whoever, they'll have an off game. When they really need to be there for the team, they don't show up. And so you can understand why perhaps Nico sometimes in game he gets frustrated and feels like, okay, I'm gonna have to go and do this, right? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise nothing happens. Yep. So it's it's I don't think that his teammates are as useless as as you know the pundits or the people like to say, right? Mm -hmm. I, I do think that, you know, Chris J, even uh, even Nex, he's actually come up a big uh, recently on land, which was a big problem for him in the past. He couldn't perform on land. And he said it himself, he didn't like playing in front of a crowd. Apparently he's gotten over that. Apparently now, all of a sudden, Nex is hitting shots. So there's one piece of the puzzle that's actually starting to, you know, you know you're know, you dusting it off, right? It was a little dusty, but now you're starting to see some shine come through, right? Mm -hmm. For the other players, Chris J, he's also capable of playing on land now. You see what I'm saying? It's just like, I think it's it's more of, okay, let's, let's look at the big picture here. And Nico, this is what he has to do in the game. He has to look at the big picture and say, okay, right, this is one weakness. This is another weakness. This is another, right? Okay, let's, let's, let's focus on this one and knock this one out. Boom. Okay, next starts playing it well on land. Great. Awesome. That's one problem I don't have to deal with anymore. Now I can count on him to get shots. All right, what's the next one? Chris J might be feeling a little unconfident sometimes. He, he reads too many forums. He takes too much, you know, too much to heart. He needs to actually, you know, toughen up a little bit or just not pay attention to that sort of stuff. Right, okay. Maybe we like ban his like Reddit account or something so he can't go on Reddit anymore. Good. Okay, we're taking care of Chris J. You know, he has to just start identifying these problems and working on them. And Mouseports are perfectly capable of becoming a very solid team. It's just going to take a lot of work. Yep. So what I advocate is just patience, right? You know that Nico's a god. Yep. So you've got that going for you. Now just focus on how do you how do you get things to work well with the team around them. So next stepping up actually is for me one of the key point key points that needs to be made in that will change mouse sports because if it isn't if there is somebody who can consistently drop 20 plus frags in a game that's what you need is you can count on Nico he'll deliver you just need a couple more players who can consistently do that yep. and then Dennis or Speedy they have like a crazy game and they go nuts and that's just even better right but you need to have a rock a foundation right yep. to build on so but yeah guys patience patience for now I think <laughs> okay um, so I have a personal question for you, so explain your castle style in three sentences. Alright, three sentences? Yeah. Anders and I focus on entertainment. Our casting style 
focuses on trying to look at the big picture instead of focusing on one aspect of casting or the other. And it's all about having a good, you know, a good time. Once you get uh, once you get bogged down and start worrying too much about your casting, you're doomed. <laughs> so, um, the next question I got for you is: You travel a lot. You stay here in London. Then you, where are you next week? Uh, next week we're going to uh, we'll be traveling again. I can't speak about it yet, but I think if I say that next week we'll be traveling again, you guys can put together the picture. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> We'll be we'll be on the road again soon. Yeah. So you are uh, a long time on the road. So uh, are you sick of traveling or you enjoy the days? I don't know. It's for now. Like I'm just happy doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So long as I'm happy doing what I'm doing, I'll just keep doing it. Uh, the day that it gets to be frustrating, where I just start to be like, ah, I really don't want to go to the airport today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I really don't want to go to that event. Ah, you know, it's just that event. It's like the last one. Ah, as soon as that starts to happen, then maybe I'll start rethinking my life mm -hmm. and I'll start seeing, okay, what are my options? What can I do that could be interesting for me? You know, right? Change it up. But for now, like. I love the life that we live with, uh, with CSGO, with, uh, with the casters that we have. It always feels like these are my friends, right? You know, it's like I'm, I look forward to going to events because I'm going to get to hang out with Moses. I'm going to get to hang out with Henry, Yanko, everybody, right? And so, you know, it's just uh, it's one, it's, it's really, we're really, really lucky in the CSGO commentary scene, right? That we all get along so well. So it, every event always just feels like, you know, you're meeting up with your friends again. You're going to get to talk about a game you love. You're going to get to have a good time. And so it's never a hassle. It's always a good thing, I think, right now. It's just, it's just obviously sucks a little bit because I'm not at home as much, so I don't get to see my girlfriend as much. I'm on the other side of the world for my family. I don't get to see them very often. Um, you know, it's, it's certain things that you just that I have to like put to the side right now, just yeah. because I want to focus and do this as best as I can. Mm -hmm. And so once, uh, yeah, once things change, because people always change and things always change, right? Once things change, I'll look at it then. But right now, I'm very happy doing what I do. Nice. So the last question. For me, as uh, you have any uh, tips for the new casters, I want to start with Counter Strike. They say, "Hey, I want to try to uh, see a score commentary like English, German, Spanish, whatever." Uh, what you can give the people for tips? Sure. So I mean, this kind of feeds in from my last answer, right? Where you just have to love what you do. Yeah. Because esports will grind you up and spit you out, or any any activity really that 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 has like a, a small level of insanity to it, right? which is basically like the hours that we work, mm -hmm. um, how much you have to be on the road, how much you work on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're the kind of person who thinks that, you know, oh, it's nine to five and then I go home to my wife and three kids or whatever, yep. it's not gonna work for eSports. So if you want to start out and be a commentator, a journalist, it doesn't matter what you want to work with in eSports, you have to be willing to put in the time to see something happen because it's not gonna happen on its own. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to do it halvesies, it's not gonna happen for you. So the only way you're gonna stand out is if you bust your ass day in, day out, and you really commit. There's going to be days you want to, you want to not do it, but that's, not, that's normal. But you know, you, you're going to do it anyway, is, what, is, the, is the point, right? Because you know that this is what you want to do. You wouldn't want to do anything else. And you see where I'm going here? So just, just focus and get your nose down and work. And it doesn't matter what you want to be. If you're a writer, you write every day. No matter the topic, no matter what, you, you just write. You put a thousand words on the page every day no matter what topic it comes up to be. If you're a journalist, if you're an interviewer, you interview your mom, I don't know, interview anybody, work on it that way. You record it, you interview somebody, you look how it went, you nitpick, you figure it out, and you go from there, and you rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. If you're a commentator, same thing. You go day in, day out, find demos, commentate on YouTube, put it up on YouTube, that sort of stuff, right? You're just gonna work, you're gonna, you're gonna get to it and work. Because otherwise, you're just not going to do anything. There's no free lunch in esports, that's for sure. It's the wild, wild west. Like, if you're not willing to fight, nobody's going to help you. Okay, then thank you for the interview. It was an honor for me. I was and honored I for me. Thank nice you time. so much. Thank you. Uh, and I wish you a nice time here in London. Likewise, man. Enjoy yeah. it. And good luck yeah. with the casting. Yeah, thank you.